Hi, welcome to another week of Beyond Education Early Childhood Weekly Bites. I'm very excited to share with you this week um, to continue on with our series last week, our session last week on um, rebounding from burnout and creating resilience. So last week I've talked about um, two key points and one is on the physical well-being to build up your at the personal level and also to think about how can you um, work on your mental uh, uh, fitness, your mental well-being fitness so at the personal level. Today, I will, I'm very pleased to be sharing with you on two other keys that would actually help you to rebound from um, burnout and also to build resilience. And that is the so, your social well-being and also on your spiritual well-being. So let's dive into it. Now, first of all, I'd like to speak with you um, about your social well-being. Now, I think you would have heard that expression that no man is, an, is a lonely island. And I think that, um, especially in the context of early childhood, we understand that um, a child doesn't develop in absence of um, the different contexts that they have, their family, their friends, their community, um, the society that they live in, or the culture and back, um, cultural background that they belong to. So it's important for us to be aware of um, all these different um, contexts and how they actually interplay in our lives, even as an early childhood educator. So I would like to encourage you to think about um, what sort of personality type you are. Well, I'm, I'm a big believer of um, being more self-aware and um, knowing yourself. So I've done a couple of um, personal um, assessment tests to understand myself a little bit better so that I can actually um, see where my actions and inactions are coming from. And I think that has actually helped me hugely in the last couple of years. So I really encourage you to, to look into some of um, those um, personal personality assessment types to know where you are, what are your strengths, and you know, what can you do to actually harness on some of those talents that you probably innately already is born with? Now, going back to the uh, topic of social uh, well-being, I do want you to um, think about um, what sort of personality type you are. So many of us, um, I would say to just put it very, very simply, fall into two um, sort of categories of like the introverts and the extroverts. Um, for many, many years, I thought that I'm an extrovert because I'm a very friendly and high connected person. So I like to um, talk to the person on the street, just say hello to um, someone that I'm passing by. Um, but the thing is that I have learned from these assessments that I'm actually an introvert. And that's very interesting. That means I get my energy by being alone and doing things that replenishes me so that I'll be well and ready to, to be around people. So to put it in a very um, interesting way, it might be an um, extroverted introvert, you can call that. And um, I think what I actually value is the family and the support of my friends, um, you know, network here in Australia and also all around the world that I was able to connect um, from time to time um, and also on regular basis to actually help my social well-being. So it doesn't mean that you need to be um, building up that social network or that you cannot have social network if you're not stepping out of your house. There's many ways of you can, uh, of you doing that. That is, um, you know, the, your social media, that is also your WhatsApp and your different kind of apps that actually helps you to connect with people that might be living a little bit apart from you, but you have got a strong connection with. So I think the bottom line is to find out who is in your tribe. So who are the people that you connect strongest with and that you get energized by being around them and spend time um, and make time to, to spend with them because this is really absolute, um, absolutely important for your social well-being. Now, the other thing is to find out what sort of connectedness that you might have um, and how are you uh, and ascertain the kind of connectedness that you probably have with dif different people. I, I like to think about it in this way. Um, you know, who, who do I actually like to be around with so that I feel energized with? 
but at the same time i also um i also thrive in the environment where whereby where i am actually being able to uh, be input into others so it's two ways you find that you are needing to um, having the input from others and also having the output to others so do find where your connections are and actively be um, establishing them and be able to nourish those relationships and you will find that through those moments where you are able to work these things out that um, you are learning from your experiences you're learning from um, each other and um, your social well-being is actually slowly being established and being widened i would say and I think that would actually have a very um, big impact on your um, personal well-being. Now, the other important thing that I want to speak to you about, which um, sometimes you know we might shy away, or um, it's kind of like a sometimes a taboo to be talking about these things. But you and I would know, even in the in the um, this landscape of early childhood, that um, we encourage children to have their spirituality spirituality doesn't speak about you having a, a faith or a religion but it speaks about that connection with um, nature on uh, or your connection with a higher um, a higher being so regardless of whether you are of faith or you have a faith belief or you are from a you know a certain faith background it is important to maintain that sense of um, awe and wonder and it is very relevant to early childhood as well. We want children to be outdoors. We want them to um, be getting out there, um, you know, in the open. I'm looking out my window and admiring the beautiful nature. Um, just also that they would understand that there are things that is beyond um, their human, you know, their human made up, their human physique, their family, their, um, their community, their culture. There's something bigger and um that's that is wonderful to ponder about and that they can actually start to uh, find out those connections so it is actually about building that connection between us as human beings and with you know a, a you know our you would you can call it whatever you know you can call it faith or you could call it um you know to your nature and um, being able to build those connections and i think once those um that that once we establish that sense of awe and wonder, we are able to appreciate when we actually go into those moments to be able to draw from that relationship with either your faith, like I said, or to nature and be able to be um, appreciative of things that is quite beyond us um, that we can actually appreciate and have wonders and think about or just, you know, like... Um, enjoy the the waves and enjoy the mountains and uh, enjoy the smell of fresh flowers so i do actually um encourage you to start building those spiritual muscles if i can say you know if that is actually not um present start thinking about those things you know where do you feel your connection is with um you know this being that's outside of you this greater being or is it with the nature it's important for that because when we bring children into the nature and as we sit with them to wonder about the world, there are many questions that we can't answer even as grown-ups. Um, and, and I think it's good to be able to show that vulnerability with children that you're working with and to ponder and grow together with them. I think that's really exciting. And um, with spirituality, I think it also uh, brings me to my last point um, on um, spiritual health which is that mindfulness being in that present being sorry being in the moment and being present in the moment so i say that again being in the moment and being present in the moment where are you you know um where are you at when you are working with young children i it's your mind worried about something that is going to happen or um you are still planning in your head about the party after work or are you worried about your child that is sick at home where are you in that moment? I think have building and establishing that spiritual health actually helps us to appreciate um, you know, what we call mindfulness and being in the moment. So when you are actually actively engaged in um, any sort of experience, may it be working in an early child setting or cooking, um, I want you to be able to enjoy those moments when you are there fully, 
fully just absorb let let that time just absorb you in what you're putting your mind to so if you are enjoying if you're cooking a meal enjoy the smells of the meal enjoy the sounds that you're making on your chopping board and when you're cooking away um or that you are just uh being um you know being present with your friends um enjoy that moment enjoy the taste of the coffee enjoy the aroma of the flowers that you're smelling enjoy the waves and the energy that it brings so my friends i encourage you to look into the areas of social well-being and spiritual well-being this week and again write down things that you feel that are really important to you the journal that you've started last week write that down and see what actually comes out for you and i i look forward to seeing you next week bye